Dog Works Radio is sponsored by Alaska Dog Works. Check out their website at alaskadogworks.com. You can support this podcast on patreon.com forward slash first paw media. As a service dog trainer, I get asked all the time by my clients, what should I tell people that want to come up and pet my service dog? I get it. It is hard for the public to understand that a service dog is not like their pet dog at home. These dogs are specifically trained to perform very advanced tasks for their handler. And if they are constantly interrupted from doing their job, it can be a real problem. From First Paw Media, sponsored by Alaska Dog Works Professional Canine Training Center in Anchorage, Alaska. This is Dog Works Radio, committed to families and their dogs to build lifelong and fulfilling relationships. Visit our website at dogworksradio.com. Now, here are your hosts, Robert and Michelle Forto. Hello, and welcome to Dog Works Radio. I'm your host, Michelle Forto. I'm the lead trainer for Alaska Dog Works, where we help you develop the best relationship possible with your dog. Today on the podcast, we are talking about the real reason why you can't pet service dogs. Is it ever okay to pet a service dog or guide dog? Find out what experts have to say about the proper etiquette for approaching a service animal up next. You've likely seen a sweet looking guide dog leading its handler around streets and stores before and you may have wondered, can I pet that dog? In short, the answer is no. If you see a dog wearing a harness, vest, or cape, assume it's working. Service dogs provide mobility, guidance, comfort, and companionship for their handlers, and interfering with what the team is doing could result in a potentially dangerous situation. This National Service Dog Awareness Month we wanted to remind you of best practices to follow when you're around a service dog to ensure everyone stays safe. There are many reasons you shouldn't pet service dogs, including it's distracting the dog from its job. You wouldn't want to try to distract and engage an air traffic controller talking to them to get their attention while he or she is working, would you? No. That would be dangerous. The same goes for a service dog. When you see it out and about, assume it's working and on duty to keep its handler safe. If people in the general public either pet, talk to, make eye contact with any assistance dog, it can distract the animal from its work and then the dog is going to not pay attention to tasks it needs to perform, says Rivi Israel guide dog program manager at Guide Dog Foundation and America's Vet Dogs. That can also distract the handler and put their safety in jeopardy. By petting a service dog, talking to it, or trying to offer it food, you're distracting it from its ability to give its full attention to keeping its handler safe. A lot of people have balance issues, and if the dog moves in one direction because it's accepting a greeting from a stranger and the handler isn't fully aware of it, it can throw the person off balance and cause them to fall, says C.J. Betancourt, M.D., Executive Director for the Foundation for Service Dog Support. Making eye contact could be just as distracting. A lot of people don't really think that even making eye contact with the service dog is a distraction, but it actually is because if the dog looks you in the eyes, it could lose focus on its job, says Israel. We teach the dogs at our foundation to avoid distraction, whether it is a person or another dog or somebody trying to feed the dog or pet it, says Israel. Even if they've received excellent training, they're still dogs first and sometimes can't help but practice instinctual behaviors. The dog is working even if it's not doing anything. There are several jobs a service dog is trained to do. 
depending on the handler's needs, and many of these are invisible. Some handlers need their dogs to get them medicine, to notice seizures, to be aware of a scent that indicates rapidly decreasing blood sugar levels for a diabetic, or to sense if their handler is uncomfortable and about to experience a PTSD episode. Even if a service dog is sleeping, assume it's working and don't wake it up from its nap. Who wants that anyway? And never ask a handler what their disability is, advises Israel. If you love dogs, learn about these service dogs saved the lives of veterans. It could be against the law in your state. Okay, we know that you wouldn't do this, but if you or someone tries to maliciously or recklessly interfere with or impede the duties performed by a guide dog or service dog, that could be a misdemeanor offense or even a class six felony in some states, including Arizona. You could get hurt. Just because a dog is wearing a service dog vest or ID, it doesn't mean they are a trained service dog. Unfortunately, there are more illegitimate service teams than there are legitimate teams these days, says Dr. Betancourt. If you're interacting with a dog that's not professionally trained to be a service dog, it could bite you or harm you. You never want to put yourself in a position to potentially be harmed, so always practice caution. You should assume any service dog you see is legitimate and working, so let it do its job. Did you know at Alaska Dog Works, we offer a discovery call to see if you are a good fit to work with us and with your dog. We even offer virtual dog training classes. And did you know that delivering a class online can be more effective than in person? Why? Because we can use the power of many multimedia tools like community, video, and podcasts that will help you reach your goals. It works. So what do you think? Did you learn anything new about your canine buddy? Before we end the show, let's press pause for a sec. Maybe ask yourself, why did this resonate with me? What aspect of my relationship with my canine buddy could I apply this to? And what am I going to do differently this week to make my dog's training a little easier? So take some time to mull it over, talk it out with a family member or trusted friend, put some ideas down in your training journal, and then check back next week for our next episode. And as always, we look forward to hearing your thoughts on any of the episodes. So reach out over on X at First Paw Media and let's spark a conversation. Until then, keep going. You are doing great. It's time to create the relationship with your dog that you've always dreamed of. Thank you for listening to DogWorks Radio. You can find the show notes for this episode and all others at alaskadogworks.com. And if you know someone in your life who needs help with their dog's training, be a hero and share our podcast with them. And we will see you next time. Got a dog training problem? There's a podcast for that to stay updated on everything dogs do on DogWorks Radio. A podcast hosted by master dog trainers and business coaches, Robert and Michelle Forto. Every week, they will introduce you to pet professionals with unique insights on dogs in the veterinary world, in books and films, and working with canines. The podcast also answers questions like how long does it take to train a puppy or what are the different training styles? Get some surprising answers on Dog Works Radio wherever you listen to podcasts. Nobody covers dog sledding like mushing from First Paw Media. Our team of athletes, volunteers, race organizers, and mushers like Robert and Michelle Forto brings you closer to the sport. If it's happening, we are there. Live from the qualifying races in January and February, the Iditarod in March, and in the summer, Mushing takes you on the road with our team and trail tour. We connect you with a history of the sport, in-depth interviews with the top mushers, and great storytelling and breaking news all year long. 
follow on mushing.com. From First Paw Media, this is Dog Works Radio. We hope you enjoyed this podcast, and we invite you to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link on the episode notes. You can tap or swipe on the episode cover art, and you'll see some offers from our sponsors. You can support our show by supporting them. If you like what you have heard, we would love it if you could give us a five-star rating and tell your friends how to subscribe, too. Your hosts are Robert and Michelle Forto. Our producer is Robert Forto and created for First Paw Media.